This arc is one of the best arcs we've seen in One Piece so far. We are soon going to see a big fight. Marines are already here on Egghead or on their way to Egghead. But Straw Hats are already in trouble. Someone has ordered Seraphims to eliminate Straw Hats and Vegapunk. Suspect who is controlling Seraphims is one of the Vegapunk. But it sucks if it's from one of the Vegapunk then other Vegapunk might have information about it. So it could also be possible that Saturn is already on Egghead and he is the one ordered Seraphim to attack. At the end of this chapter 1075, we are going to see a twist. Rob Lucci and Kaku decided to join hands with Straw Hats. What compelled Rob Lucci and Kaku to join hands with the Straw Hats? Is it a change of heart or something else? You have to stay till the end of the video to know this. Now without wasting any time, let's deep dive into the chapter. Cover story shows Vegapunk meeting with the Gorosai. Vegapunk is noticeably younger, even more so than his appearance after the Ohara genocide, suggesting this meeting may have occurred several years prior. Vegapunk went there for funding, for his science experiments, and world government is right place where he will get enough funding for his research. Interesting thing you might have noticed about this cover story is that Gorosai are actually silhouetted here. Their faces are not shown here. Only thing we can see is their white hair and white beard. One thing to consider is that Oda Sensei did it on purpose. The immortality of Gorosai has been the subject of discussion in the One Piece community for a while now. The thing I hate and you might too is that Oda Sensei leave us in the middle of nowhere. One of the things I hate more is that most of you don't subscribe to the channel and like video. It's for free there is no charges for doing this. It will give channel a boost. Anyway back to the chapter. In the last chapter as we saw Pythagoras was attacked. The blast that hit the Seraphim lab where Pythagoras was searching for Stella that blast was so big that Shaka was able to hear that from the control room. Shaka tries to reach Pythagoras but he receives no response from him. He sends a Kamiko to search the sea tower but someone takes it out cutting off the security camera. Shaka seems shocked as one by one security camera has been cut off. But before it got cut off it captures a shadow figure. As you look closely shadow figure seems like Saturn. If he is here then how he reached the Lobo phase, but it could also be possible it might be the traitor, who is attacking Vegapunk and Straw Hats one by one. Anyway we will get to know in the upcoming chapters. Luffy realizes that the communication device he is wearing does not operate any longer, as if all communications have been cut off. Luffy asks Shaka did something happened, I am unable to hear their voices anymore. Before we get an answer from Shaka, scene shifted to other groups who went for the search of Stella. So Nami, Brooke and Edison are in tower at 3 floor, as they were calling out for Vegapunk, but Nami was distracted by vault full of diamonds. Nami being Nami for 2 minutes, after getting treasure which is synthetic diamonds she packed up all and was ready to head back to the control room. Edison telling her that their first priority is finding the Stella. Nami leaves her treasure behind for now but she will come later for them. As Edison clarifies, these are not cosmetic diamonds, they're manufactured diamonds for industrial use. After hearing this we see sparkling in Nami's eyes and we know what she is thinking now after hearing that she can make synthetic diamonds as many as she want and make money. Scene shifted to floor of same tower where Robin, Chopper are with Atlas, where Atlas is explaining about. Her face is a mask and she can replace whatever part of his body if it gets damaged. Robin then notices something. She and Chopper thought Vegapunk had gotten chopped up and this are his organs and vats. Atlas reveals that this are artificial organ. So it's also great discovery by Vegapunk, instead of relying on human donors they can use artificial organ to save life, which amazes little Dr. Chopper. We return back to the control room where Shaka desperately trying to reach Edison, but due to the downtime of the entire communications network, he is unable to reach Edison. In the back Luffy calls for Shaka, Luffy still couldn't figure out why he can't hear others. He thinks that he broke his headset, so he explains to Shaka that he did not break anything. Shaka clarifies that what's going on isn't his fault. Shaka calls Luffy to take a closer look at the monitor. They both watch together monitor and Shaka explains that camera feeds are going out one by one. After seeing this Luffy seems quite worried about this. Scene shifted to B Tower where Sanji and Jinb are with Stussy. Our simp boy Sanji swooning over her and asking if she would call him a dog while she flirtatiously reminds him we are here to search Vegapunk. Jinb acknowledges laboratory is particularly massive. Stussy reveals that they are on the weapons manufacturing floor so they can't be setting off any shockwaves. As for the last group, this party consists of Usopp, Frankie, Lilith, and York, the four head to Tower C Floor 3. This is the place where last time we saw Pythagoras. 
Use up seems impressed after seeing the bubble gun. According to Lilith, this is a bubble gun, which is designed to reflect enemy attacks back at them. It seems the same technology used for Mark III pacifist a bubble shield. The group suddenly notices something against cloud of smoke in front of them. They end up finding Pythagoras' body with his head missing. Frankie thought that Pythagoras' head is blown off due the explosion. But suddenly Usopp notices someone behind the smoke. That guy was none other than Pythagoras. Thankfully, Pythagoras turned out to be fine as he had detached his head from his body before he get any damage from the blast. Usopp asked Pythagoras it was an accident or something. But it seems like an attack on Pythagoras' body. It is still hard for Pythagoras to believe what happened, so he is still in shock. Pythagoras then notices that York is missing. The group calls for her and notices that she is with S-Snake. She tells S-Snake to wait outside since Edison ordered her to stand down, but instead S-Snake is ready to attack York with her ability. But Pythagoras screams at York to stay away from S-Snake, but before she could even react she was turned into stone. Lilith doesn't understand what happened and what is Seraphim doing here. In the recent chapter, we got to know Seraphims have their own decision-making capability based on the situation, so she might have moves on her own. Lilith tries to get her to stop, but S. Snake ignores and fires a laser at them. It destroys the bridge they were on and they all fall. Lilith complains as they fall that they don't recognize their creator, us Vegapunks. Pythagoras confirms this by saying they don't accept any order we gave them. Now, this seems pretty clear that it was S. Snake who attacked Pythagoras, not the traitor we were thinking. They all four manages to land it safely and none of them got serious injuries. Lilith tries to reach Shaka but fails to do so, and when Frankie suggests they fight back, Lilith tells him it is impossible to beat a Seraphim. Back to fourth floor, Zoro called for Luffy to help. Shaka and Luffy went there to help Zoro, but they were stunned as they saw that S-Bear and S-Hawk had breached the room. Zoro explains the situation by stating they attacked not only him but the CP0 agent too. Despite Shaka's attempts to make them stop but they too are not obeying his order, the two Seraphim open fire. Thankfully, they evade their attacks while saving the unconscious Luchi and Kaku, who are in the Seraphim's sights. Shaka begins to fear that Vegapunk himself is commanding the Seraphim if the satellites cannot get them to stop. He also realizes that someone is trying to kill everyone by trapping them and cutting off communications, and that they set up this situation very carefully. Luchi and Kaku then wake up and ask Luffy and Zoro to free them, offering that they form temporary alliance and work together to fight them. Luffy and Zoro respond with a look of disgust. We know one thing trusting this world government dogs is dangerous especially Rob Lucci, but who want them to be dead? Is this the world government who wants them to be dead because they fail in their mission? Or this is the traitor who is doing all this? What is your opinion comment down below? This is Anime Saab signing off see you guys in the next video.